How Nancy and Vance did it. How did Nancy and Vance, whom you met in the introduction, fare with the diet changes? For Nancy, the change was a welcome one. She was fed up with the lack of results from the American Diabetes Association diet and thought a vegetarian diet sounded like a good approach. She wanted to lose weight, and she was sick of feeling so low on energy. This, she hoped, might be an answer. Nancy grew up in Minnesota. Her mother was not an especially talented cook, she says, but her Scandinavian family loved food. Her mother and sisters all struggled with weight problems. Like most of our study volunteers, Nancy had already made healthy changes to her diet over the years. She had stopped eating beef, ate plenty of vegetables, and had gotten away from fatty dressings, so making the shift was reasonably easy. She started her day with oatmeal topped with cinnamon and fat-free vanilla soy milk. At mid-morning, she liked to have a snack, usually fruit, such as apples, bananas, raspberries, blueberries, grapes, or oranges. For lunch, she had a hearty vegan soup, such as minestrone, vegetable soup, sweet potato soup, or chili, along with a salad made with spinach leaves, tomatoes, red, yellow, and orange bell peppers, kidney beans and chickpeas, and other ingredients. Her afternoon snack was often fruit, rye crackers, baked tortilla chips with salsa, or hummus and pita bread. After a long day at work, Nancy had no interest in preparing a gourmet meal, so her dinners were quick and easy. A veggie burger with frozen mixed vegetables, which she microwaved. Sometimes she had nothing more than a bowl of bran cereal. A late-night fruit snack rounded things out. We gave her group a supermarket tour and provided cooking demonstrations to introduce everyone to healthful products that might be new to them. Nancy preferred to keep it simple and started making a large pot of soup to eat all week. I am not a cook, she said, and I find it very easy to stay on this program. Vance usually started his day with oatmeal, either plain or with apples and cinnamon. He also had toast and fresh fruit. Lunch or dinner was pasta or burritos along with fresh vegetables and fruits. Sometimes his taste called for salads, usually dressed up with beans, blood oranges, or other additions. I had to learn to read labels, he said. It is easy to underestimate the amount of fat or sugar in a can of food. A label might show six grams of fat, and you might think that means the whole can, but it actually means just one serving. For Vance, the vegan diet was the way to go. I don't have the personality that would let me have just a small piece of chicken or a small piece of beef, he explained. I have to cut it out altogether. For me, this is a lifestyle change. Soup Nirvana Walter arrived at one of our research meetings to announce that he had found the perfect lunch. His local supermarket stocks a line of soups from the Tabachnik Company that happen to come in several low-fat, vegan varieties, such as black bean soup, split pea soup, and vegetarian chili. With simple, natural ingredients, a serving has about 200 calories and just a gram or two of fat. Some are available in both regular and low-sodium versions. Since they are frozen, they keep more or less indefinitely and can be microwaved to make a meal in minutes. There are many other great brands, including Dr. McDougall's, Health Valley, and Amy's, making soups that are easy, quick, and healthful. Healthier Substitutes for Dairy Products It may surprise you to learn that some of the biggest sources of fat are lurking in the dairy section. Milk, cheese, and ice cream once enjoyed a healthful reputation that few people question, but that has changed. It has become clear that these foods contribute not only fat, but also cholesterol, animal protein, and in the case of fat-free varieties, a big load of lactose sugar. Here's the lowdown on dairy, followed by the good news about how easy it is to replace it. Dairy fat. Cow's milk derives, believe it or not, 49% of its calories from fat. That is a lot by any standard. You may imagine that 2% milk is much lower in fat. Not so. That 2% figure refers to fat content by weight, which is deceptive because it is thrown off by milk's water content. When you drink a glass of milk, your body absorbs that water. 
What matters for your health is how much fat you are left with. Nutritionists look for the percentage of calories that come from fat because that figure is unaffected by water content. It turns out that for 2% milk, about 35% of calories come from nothing but fat. What is particularly worrisome about milk, though, is the type of fat it contains. Most of it is saturated fat, the very kind that is linked to insulin resistance and raises cholesterol levels. Typical yogurt, ice cream, and sour cream products are high in fat, too. Cheese is loaded with it. Many brands derive about 70% of their calories from fat. Dairy Sugar Fat-free dairy products have had their fat removed, but what's still there may surprise you. When the fat is skimmed away, the predominant nutrient in milk is actually sugar. Lactose, the dairy sugar. The lactose molecule is a combination of two smaller sugars, glucose and galactose. Approximately 55% of the calories in fat-free milk are from lactose. People who quite rightly avoid sodas and other sugary drinks because of their sugar content will want to be aware that milk products are a major source of sugar, too. Lactose, of course, is the sugar that causes digestive upset for many people. Lactose intolerance is a normal condition that occurs when the enzymes that allow babies to digest mother's milk naturally start to dissipate. When these enzymes are gone, lactose passes through the intestinal tract undigested. In the lower intestinal tract, bacteria start to ferment the sugar, causing gas, cramps, and diarrhea. Lactose intolerance was once thought to be an abnormality, but is now known to be the biological norm. The symptoms come on gradually, sometime after early childhood, and they are simply a sign that you have successfully passed the age of weaning. Dairy Proteins These proteins have come under scrutiny for their potential contribution to type 1 diabetes, as described in Chapter 3. But they are implicated in many other health concerns as well. Animal proteins appear to accelerate the gradual loss of kidney function that can occur in diabetes. Plant sources of protein, beans, grains, vegetables, and soy products, for example, do not appear to cause this problem. People who have migraines often report improvement when they avoid certain foods, and milk and other dairy products are often at the top of the list. The same has been reported for some cases of rheumatoid arthritis. The problem, it appears, is not the fat or lactose, at least not for these conditions. The trigger seems to be the dairy proteins. Dairy products are linked to other health problems, ranging from acne to prostate and ovarian cancer. It is the latter issue, cancer, that has gotten the attention of the medical community. Two large Harvard studies and several other studies from other countries have shown that milk-drinking men have a significantly higher risk of prostate cancer compared with men who generally avoid milk. The explanation appears to lie in hormonal effects caused by milk. For ovarian cancer, the evidence is mixed, with some studies showing higher risk among milk drinkers and others showing no increased risk. Milk's selling point has been the calcium it provides. There are, however, better calcium sources and more effective ways of maintaining strong bones. I'll go into more detail about this later in the chapter. Making better choices People who avoid dairy products find no shortage of great substitutes. Health food stores and regular supermarkets stock soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, and many others. They come in regular, calcium-fortified and low-fat varieties and in plain vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry flavors. You will want to choose those lowest in fat and sugar. Calcium-fortified juices have arrived on the market, too. Of course, none of these is necessary. After the age of weaning, the only beverage that is actually biologically required is water, Not soda, not juice, not milk, just pure water. There are many delicious non-dairy ice cream substitutes made from soy or rice milk. In many cases, however, the main reason they are so delicious is that they contain added sugar. Your taste buds can be easily seduced by these treats, but your body would be far better off with a bowl of strawberries. Alternatives to Eggs There are just two problems with eggs, the yolk and the white. 
The yolk is where cholesterol lurks, with 213 milligrams in a single egg. That's more than in an 8-ounce steak. The yolk also holds the fat, about 5 grams per egg. Egg white has problems of its own, since it is essentially pure animal protein. As you know by now, animal protein can present problems for your kidneys, and you are better off with plant protein. Can there really be all that fat, cholesterol, and animal protein inside a single egg? Certainly. Keep in mind that when an egg hatches, a baby chick emerges. That chick's body was formed from what was inside the egg when it was laid. Like all animal products, eggs have no fiber at all and no complex carbohydrate. There are plenty of great ways to replace eggs. Whether you are hooked on scrambled eggs for breakfast or baked goods that include eggs, try these substitutes. If a recipe calls for just one or two eggs, leave them out. Add a couple of extra tablespoons of water for moisture. Egg replacement powders are available in many health food stores. Use one heaping tablespoon of soy flour or cornstarch plus two tablespoons of water to replace each egg in baked products. Try an egg-sized piece of mashed tofu in place of each egg. Half a mashed banana can be used in muffin and cookie recipes, although it will provide its own flavor. For meatless loaves and veggie burgers, use any of the following to bind the ingredients together. Tomato paste, mashed potato, moistened bread crumbs, or rolled oats. For a breakfast dish to replace scrambled eggs, scrambled tofu has become popular. When you see the menus and recipes section, you will discover why. Tofu has a texture very much like egg white and takes on the flavor of whatever it is cooked with. Be wary of products promoted as no cholesterol egg replacements. Many are simply egg whites with various added ingredients. 2. Keep vegetable oils to a minimum. Oils creep in everywhere, it seems. Cooking oils, salad oils, vegetable oils used in baking and in snack foods. Vegetable oils do enjoy a better reputation than animal fat, and indeed, they have less saturated fat, the kind that raises cholesterol levels. But we still want to keep all oils to a minimum. Here's why. First, as you know by now, all fats and oils are loaded with calories. They have 9 calories per gram, which is more than twice the calorie content of carbohydrate or protein, 4 calories per gram. Thus, when it comes to calorie content, vegetable oils are as fattening as lard. All fats and oils are, in fact, equally fattening. Second, if your goal is to regain as much insulin sensitivity as possible, you will want to eliminate not only animal fats, but also added vegetable oils. Cleaning the animal fat out of your cellular locks does no good if you're going to clog them with vegetable grease. Here are the sources of these oils. Fried foods. French fries, potato chips, onion rings, and other fried snacks are essentially sponges carrying grease from the deep fryer to your body fat stores. Added oils. Typical salad dressings and margarines have lots of fat. Oils used as ingredients. Many packaged foods and sauces include significant amounts of oil. Oils used in sautéing. Many recipes begin with the instruction to sauté onions, garlic, or other ingredients in oil. Some restaurants use oil almost as a staple.